Excel for Desktop recently got a new feature where you can insert your data from a picture. You might be wondering, when do I use this? Can't I just get the data in the proper format? I'm going to take you through some use cases that I personally find useful. The other important question is, does it work properly? Or do you end up with more work because you have to fix everything afterwards? Well, I'm going to use different types of images. We're going to test it out together and let's see what we get as the final outcome. Our first test case is a screenshot. So I often get screenshots of people's spreadsheets looking for solutions. They can't always share the file itself because of sensitive data. But for me, it's easier to figure out a solution when I can actually use the data. And I'm not a fan of recreating the screenshot by hand. You may remember there is a way to convert an image to Excel and I covered it in this video. But for that, you had to use the app on your smartphone. Now we get that feature directly in Windows for Excel desktop. It's currently in beta and it should soon roll out to everyone in Office 365. Excel for Mac has had it for a while. I think that's the first time Mac was ahead of Windows, uh, at least in terms of Excel. Let's just see if it works out properly. Let's jump in. A student sent me their function that's not working and they're wondering why it's not working. I'd like to bring this to Excel, especially the data side of things. So I don't necessarily need the function here. It would be nice if it comes with, but it's important for me to get the data so I can try out my own version of the formula here. Where do we go to when we want to use this feature? We go currently to the data tab. So it's sitting together with the get and transform data options. It's actually called from pictures. So if I expand my ribbon, you can see that here. That's the option that we need. If you're using a Mac, it's sitting in the insert tab. So we're going to go picture from file. That's the picture I want. We're going to click on insert. Now we get this pop up on the side. We see a preview of the image and I can make it bigger or smaller if I zoom in and out. Now, if I scroll down, that's how the data is going to look. So I can either just go ahead and insert the data right now or I can review this. So let's just click on review and see what we get. Four items require a review. One is this formula. And it seems like it's missing parts, but I don't really care about the formula. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept this. Then it's this part here. It doesn't know what to do with that. Oh, that's the rest of the formula. Let's just go ahead and accept. This is fine. Let's accept it. And it's picking something up here. I can't see anything. I'm just going to go ahead and accept. And now this option is grayed out here. Notice on this row, I'm actually getting the column headers. If I zoom out, we see that L and M and N. So some of these column headers are being picked out here. But it's fine. It looks good. Let's just go ahead and insert the data. And it tells me that you are responsible for validating the accuracy of the data. So you can't tell your boss it was Excel that did it. You need to check it out yourself. OK, so this is what I get. The formula is all messed up, but I don't really care about these. So I'm just going to delete. That was where the formula was actually sitting. I don't need this either, but I need this. And this looks pretty good except that the columns are a bit messed up. Now in the screenshot, we just had the grid lines activated. So probably if we have good borders around the data set, it would have been easier to recognize it, but it doesn't really matter because it's easy in this case to just clean this up. It's definitely better than having to type this out from scratch. And if we cross check these numbers with our screenshot, we're going to see that the numbers were picked up correctly and they're actually seen as numbers. So if I use auto sum here using the shortcut key alt equals and I press enter, I get the sum of these values. OK, so even though it wasn't perfect, it did save me a lot of time here. Another practical use case I can see for this is grabbing data images from websites. Now, why would you need this? We'll take a look at this example. Here we have the Fortune Global 500 list for 2021. Now, let's say I'm interested in this data set here. Well, I want to try and bring this to Excel. So I'm going to copy this, go to Excel and paste this in. And that's the way it comes in. Now you might say, well, what about Power Query? Well, with Power Query, it's not going to work either because this data set here is using JavaScript. It's not using HTML. So Power Query can't pick it up. 
So let's grab a screenshot of this. I'm going to use the shortcut key control shift S. Let's capture only this area and copy this to the clipboard. Now let's go back to Excel. This time we're going to go from clipboard and it's picking up our image from the clipboard. We can see it here. We can zoom in a bit and then just move around. Everything looks pretty good. We have the ability to review this if we want to see how many different things it picked up. So that's fine. We can change these if we want. This looks good. Looks good as well. And that's fine. This is changing rank. There was no change. We can put nothing if we want. We can put a zero or actually I can just put that dash in there as well and click on accept. And now let's insert the data. You can also just go ahead and insert the data without reviewing it. You don't have to go through all of these steps. And let's insert it right here and take a look at this. It looks pretty neat here. We even get the data formatted properly. So this has the currency format. This has the percentage format and so on. And all our data looks identical to what we had in the screenshot. So I'm just pasting the screenshot down here. We can see the numbers are matching. Okay, so I did a great job on the previous example. Now let's take a look at something more difficult. This time I have a photo of a newspaper and it's not a great photo. So let me just show it to you here. That's what we want to import. So notice that the decimals are difficult to pick up. In general, it's just difficult to read this. Is it going to work? Let's try it out. Data from picture from file. It's this one right here. Click on insert. I hope it takes its time to analyze this, but it doesn't really. And I can already see there are problems here. So I'm not even going to bother to review this in this view in this tool. Let's just insert the data and review it on the grid. 18 items still require review. Yeah, I think it's might even be more than that. So let's insert anyway and take a look at this. Notice the date was picked up properly. That's great. This one is fine. Not so fine. And here it looks like we're missing some minor details. I'm just being sarcastic here. It looks like we're missing the decimal. Okay, let's double check with our image. It's easier if I insert this as a picture. Just put it to the side here and start comparing. Uh, this one looks good. This one, the digits are fine. The decimal is gone. And here as well, instead of the decimal, we're getting a space. So we can switch that this as well. This one does require us to go line by line and cross check if everything is OK. I can't really trust this. I would have to compare each number with the image here. OK, so overall for this case with this type of image, it didn't do such a great job. As you can see, the results are mixed. Sometimes you don't need to do much at all. And sometimes you have to put in a lot of effort but definitely less than if you had to type everything manually. So I expect that with time and with further development of this technology behind this, the accuracy is going to improve. And the tool isn't perfect, but it's already a time saver. What do you think? Is it going to be useful to you? Perhaps to digitalize old tax returns that only existed in hard copy, or to quickly grab data from a website that doesn't want to cooperate with Power Query? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and do consider subscribing if you aren't already. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.